Welcome to the video, everybody. So I'm going to answer a question that was put to me, something I think a lot of you will find interesting. So we have somebody who has some skills, been doing tutorials, put up a basic website, but two things. A, they're not sure if they understand the fundamentals. He uh, has been seeing my videos where I keep emphasizing the importance of the fundamentals is more, more than anything else. You got to know your fundamentals. So he asks, he puts a very good question to me. What are those fundamentals? And how do I know if I really know them well enough to be able to get a job? Number one. Uh, number two, he is wondering how could we test this? Is there any way? Is there any way to test if you have those fundamental skills? And he had a few uh, other fears, psychological, uh, well, psychological fears. That's what they are. Fears. He had a few other fears with regards to uh, preparedness. Is he able now to get a job? Is he going to be good enough? So that's a good question. I'm going to answer it here. All right, so let me just read off his email and I'll answer the questions as they come up. One lingering question that I have is when do I know that I have my fundamentals down? Someone should create a fundamentals list for HTML, CSS, JavaScript, maybe even a test of some sort. So uh, that's what I have. Uh, we put out a Studio Web certifications system. It's a platform within the Studio Web platform. Uh, that tests to see whether or not you really understand the subjects that we test for. So right now we have fundamentals, certifications in HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, Python, and PHP. Uh, this is much, much better than a certificate of completion because with a certificate of completion, all they do is, you know, you click, 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 click on some links and uh, you click, I did the last video, and they go, oh, here, you completed the course. There's no verification. There's no testing. So people realize that the certifi certificates of completion are not that uh, valuable. There's something, but they're not super valuable. So what we did is we engineered a certification system that literally tests your abilities. So we have a bunch of controls in place to uh, protect the integrity of the certification process. Very important. And so, like, for example, every single certification exam is unique to you. So when you log in to do the JavaScript certification or the Python certification, and you're going to be fed questions one at a time, code challenges, theoretical questions. You have to understand the theory and the concepts, right? So we test that it's on a timer. And uh, somebody else comes on, logs in, does the same certification exam, the same JavaScript certification. Their questions are going to be different from yours because it's randomly generated uh, set of questions. Questions are weighted by difficulty. Everybody gets an equal distribution of weighted questions per exam, and they're all randomized. So there's an integrity to the process. Two advantages of the Studio Web certifications. I don't want this to be a commercial, but... It goes to this question. The two advantages is A, you test to see that you have those foundational skills under your belt. If you pass a studio web certification, 100% you know the material and you're ready to go. And number two, it's a way to start building your reputation, start building your portfolio. Again, as I've told people many times, real world projects are far more important than any sort of certificates or certifications. In the order of importance, right, it's uh, certificates of completion are way down here. Certifications that are tested are way up here. And uh, real world projects that you can show are way higher in terms of importance. So we'll keep that in mind. So um, there you go. So that's the first question. So let me get into the rest of the email. Another thing that stood out to me was my list of skills. A career, co a career coach told me to list everything that I had ever used, but I felt like a fraud as you read them out from my site. I have indeed used every one of those technologies, but not nearly enough to consider them as my real skills. Meaning, I cannot just readily use them without documentation, Google, or YouTube. This is kind of like an imposter syndrome, and... Um, it's something a lot of people have to struggle with, especially in the early stages, because there's this conception, there's this idea in your head that you have to know a technology like the back of your hand perfectly to be able to professionally code in it. It's not true. 
In fact, one of the main jobs, this is the, if you're going to take anything from this video, take this. One, one of the main jobs, if not the main job of a software developer is being able to learn something new for that job. That's why I say you have to be language and technology neutral or agnostic, perhaps you can say. Uh, why? Because you have to realize that certain coding languages, certain programming languages, certain libraries, certain frameworks are better suited to a particular task, a particular job. So if you're married, say, to Java, and you have a job that might be better suited with just uh, something with PHP, MySQL, and you just have this thing against PHP because of whatever reason, you're not helping yourself and you're not helping your client. Sometimes you have to move from one tech to the other, well, a lot of times. So again, what you want to take away from this video of anything, the main job of a professional developer is to be able to learn new technology given the needs of the job. So yes, he has limited experience with a bunch of technologies he's listed. Guess what? That's how most coders work. They'll have a concentration where they're really good at, and then they'll have a bunch of peripheral experience and knowledge in other areas. That's fine. As long as you have solid fundamentals, that's more than adequate. That's exactly what you want. And this will shift over time. So once upon a time, I was really, really good at uh, Java, JSP, servlets. In fact, I had developed my own framework from scratch, uh, MVC framework. And then fast forward a few years and that skill set changed to something else. Like today, even though I did years and years of Java programming, my Java skills are very rusty because I haven't written Java in many years now. I jumped into other areas, other languages, other frameworks, other roles. Now, the good thing is because I have that experience as a coder and because I have a really good understanding and grasp of the fundamentals, I can go back and learn Java if I want to get back up to speed with Java again within a, a couple days, I'd be up and running again. So yeah, again, you don't have to be a master at every single technology out there. Nobody is, nobody is. Uh, at best, you know 5% of a particular language and uh, well, that's what you're gonna use. And uh, in, when you shift in a few years, you'll forget stuff and you lose touch you know, with a certain stack or a certain framework because they have developed in different directions and you're doing something else and that's normal, that's okay. He continues, I really need help with CSS or actually wrote, I really need CSS help. I struggle with that more than JavaScript. For example, my site took me almost three months to build due to all the stylistic uh, glitches or the styling glitches. I eventually worked it out, but I just have no idea if I am ready. And I started this at the beginning of 2019. All right, Stefan, thanks again. Okay, first of all, CSS, uh, difficulty with CSS and using CSS, especially when it comes to layout, that's very common. CSS was, uh, in my opinion, ill-conceived by the nerds who originally put it together because they saw it as a, a styling language for documents, uh, rather because HTML were not looked at, HTML pages were, and websites were not looked at as applications, they were looked at as documents. And so CSS was kind of designed that way as well. Only recently with things like CSS grid, uh, CSS tables, uh, Flexbox, has CSS introduced some really robust user interface building tools, if you will. But yeah, don't worry, this is normal. CSS is a real tricky uh, to work with, tricky to understand, like the, the nature of the cascade, for example, which is a key mechanism and a key uh, architectural structure of CSS can be difficult because the cascade, as an example, see CSS is short for cascading style sheets. Cascading has to do with hierarch hierarchical uh, predominances within your code. So certain things will have a more importance than other things. So you may write some CSS code that changes your fonts to, I don't know, blue, but because you place a font call or a declaration to red higher up the hierarchical chain, uh, 
your your fonts look red when you're expecting it to be blue, and you're like, well, what what's going on here? And it's because of the hierarchy. That's one of the things that messes people up. Now, the hierarchy in CSS uh, can be defined by the specificity, if I said that right, how specific your CSS uh, targeting is. That's one thing. How it appears just in the um, in your CSS styling sheets in your pages also affects hierarchy, and it goes on and on and on and on. I won't get into it here. Do my course. I teach all that. So this is not a that hierarchy and the way it's set up. It allows for a tremendous fine grained control in terms of how you apply your CSS declarations and your rules and how it impacts the sites and the pages and the apps. But the cost is is that it can get pretty messy quick. So one of the key things about writing good, clean CSS code is to really structure uh, your basic, your code well and clearly so that you don't mess up things in terms of hierarchy. Anyway, uh, that's about it. So very common questions, uh, problems with CSS, yes. A uh, little imposter syndrome, yes. Uh, and uh, do I know enough to be able to get a job? Uh, again, these are very common things. I gave them a given solution. Do you know enough? Do my fundamentals, exams, uh, certifications, you do, that will test that. But more importantly, once you've done, like, let's say, Studio Web, you understand all those fundamentals, you just got to go out there and do real work, real work. More important than taking any certifications. And again, remember another major point from this video is nobody knows everything. And your job primarily as a developer is to learn, to be able to learn new things quickly and to adapt. So that's why I say don't get married to any particular tech. That's why I make fun of Ruby people. I make the Ruby joke is just to make not so much fun of Ruby, it's to make fun of people who hate or love Ruby or hate or love PHP or hate or love C sharp. You know what I mean? It's 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 immature. It's immature. They're, they all have their purposes except for Ruby. And finally, yes, CSS is a bit of a kludge tech, in my opinion. It was not conceived for user interface design, as I, in my opinion, and it's unnecessarily difficult sometimes to work with, especially when it comes to layout. But even beyond that, now that they solve layout pretty much with Grid and Flexbox, which are a core to CSS3 now, the hierarchy or the hierarchical system within CSS can make it uh, unnecessarily buggy. So organize your CSS code really well from the inception. All right, I hope that helps, and uh, we'll talk soon.